As a teacher, and just a human in general, there will be seasons in life that have a huge negative impact on us that pretty much derails us. This could be a major injury, a death in the family, a divorce, or some debilitating mental health problem. These events unfortunately throw us in the state where we don't know how we're going to balance everything. We can't figure out how we're going to get everything done while also juggling the demands of being a teacher. In today's video, I'm going to discuss 10 ways to do List so that you can free up time and mental bandwidth to deal with something major in your personal life while also not feeling like you're neglecting your students. This is part four in a four-part series about how to save time as a teacher because let's face it, there's just too much to do and too little time. If this is something that you need to hear right now, be sure that you don't neglect that like button and the subscribe button and maybe even that notification bell so that the YouTube algorithm will give this video some much needed love. So I'm actually been through two really major seasons in my life. The first one was a major injury. I broke my ankle, had surgery, and had to be out for quite some time. And the second one was a divorce. Now in both situations, they happened all of a sudden and I really had to figure out how I was going to get everything done while still healing from my surgery and while still trying to figure out my personal life and how I was going to move on from my divorce. I mean, I had to figure out where it was going to live and what was going to happen to my daughter and finances and things like that. So I really had a lot on my mind in both situations. Now you may have been through something like this before and you remember just how stressful it was and maybe that year just kind of fell apart. But if it hasn't happened to you yet, then this is gonna help you so that you can still feel like you're not failing as a teacher while still tackling all of the things that you need to think about in your personal life. So the first thing to consider if something major is happening in your life is that this is not the time to implement anything major like a project or some new social emotional learning or anything like that. This is the time to really simplify. A lot of times we have something major coming up and we just kind of feel like we have to do it. And it could be something that usually takes up a lot of your time and energy and you love doing it. But when something major, something negative hits your life, you are not going to be able to think about that project. Or if you had something where you have to be really emotional with students and open up like social emotional learning lessons. It is not the time to do that because let's be frank, you could just kind of break down during that time. And if you're stuck at home because you had surgery, you're definitely not going to want to leave a project for your substitute. That's just a complete nightmare because as we know, projects, a lot of it is just managing other people's time and it's not necessarily daily lessons. And that opens up a lot of behavioral issues if it's not you in the classroom. The second thing that you can do is to do something really engaging with the students. So this would involve some kind of self-directed learning with a topic that the students are interested in. So maybe like if you're an English teacher, you could have them read a novel that's something that is interesting or short story that applies to them that they can relate to. If you're teaching math, this could be a time to bust out that fun unit, even if it's maybe not for a little bit down the ways, or maybe you already covered that before. Just something that keeps a student engaged so that you don't have to be there keeping on top of them in terms of them staying interested in the material or them not displaying problem behaviors. Anything that is a little more self-directed because the students are intrinsically motivated. Also, it could be a time for things like short writing prompts or in-class debates or class discussions where the students are sort of leading what's going on so that you don't have to always be the one that's front and center when your mind is somewhere else. The next way to free up time is to use pre-existing resources. So if you're someone like me and you like to come up with your own fun lessons and things to do, this is not the time to do that. This is the time to bust out the textbook and just go through it, even though it could be kind of boring for you. This is the time to use other people's resources. So maybe in addition to your textbook, you have supplemental materials. For example, in English, not only do we have the textbook, but we also have grammar and spelling and vocabulary. This is the time to kind of throw this at the students because it's something that is already planned and prepared and it doesn't require you to do a lot of thinking. When I was going through my divorce, 
I already had some fun things planned for my students, but I knew that I just could have put my all into it. So we went back to stories in their textbook and I just used the worksheets and materials and quizzes that came with it. And it really saved me from feeling like I was failing as a teacher because I was kind of phoning it in. But at the same time, the students were learning regardless. The fourth way to free up time is to modify past lessons. So this would be reteaching concepts that you've done before, but you're going to use different materials. So if you taught a concept in science or in math and the students maybe are weak in that, then you could decide that this is a time to reteach and for maybe some students extend it, but definitely reteach it by using something else. And this makes it so that you don't have to think too much. You can just pull together something really quickly and you've already taught the lesson. So you don't have to actually like try to figure out how you're going to deliver it because it's familiar to you. The next way to free up time is to leverage technology. Now in this video where I discuss the different ways to deliver a lesson, I talk about flipping learning. So this is where the students get the lecture through a video or something that they read at home and then they're going to practice that concept in class. So this takes away the pressure from you to have to teach the lesson. It's be basically being taught by somebody else. And then you can maybe review it really quick. And then pretty much the entire period is spent with students practicing it and asking you for help. This makes it so that you can just kind of hang back. You can help the students as needed, but it doesn't take as much mental bandwidth when you are doing it this way. Also be sure to have students submit work online. And so this is especially helpful. Let's say that you had certain surgery and you're stuck at home, or maybe you're out of town because there was a death in the family, but you don't want to fall behind. So what you can do is you could just have students submit online if that's built into your grading system. And then that way you can still check through it and you're not behind when you get back to work. I've also used leveraging technology when I'm homesick and I know that I couldn't get a substitute for the next day. It's going to be just a mishmash of teachers on their planning period. And so what I do is I will quickly either audio or video record the lesson for the day, disseminate it through Google Classroom, and the students can still get that information and they're not behind. That way we don't waste a class day of students just wasting time on their iPads or doodling or something like that. The next way to free up time when something major is happening in your life is to ask colleagues for resources. So if you don't have something prepared and you know that you're going through a rough time and you just don't have enough material, ask your colleagues for what they're using or what they've used in the past. Something that is easy for the students to kind of be self-directed and where you don't have to do a lot of teaching up front. I'm sure that they have also been through that type of a season in their life or they know of somebody else that has and they have something that they can give you in a jiffy. I think that a lot of times we might be a little too embarrassed or maybe even prideful to lean on our colleagues when we're struggling through something like this in our lives, but this is not the time to be that way. This is the time to reach out and ask your colleagues to rally for you and help you out. The seventh way to free up time is to give jobs to your students. This is really important because students can actually do so much of the little things that maybe you're gonna start forgetting to do because you've got a lot on your mind. I mean, when I again was going through my divorce, I had a lot to think about like getting a lawyer and looking for a place to live, things like that. So having students do jobs for you, something as simple as handing out papers, doing attendance, things like that. It can be really, really helpful, even like delegating to a student who's going to remind you where you left off this day so that when you see them again, you remember what you did. I mean, I recall that when I was going through all of that, I couldn't even remember what I did the previous day, let alone two days before. So if you could have a student who you can joke around, say, you know what, I'm really forgetful. Can you make sure when we see each other again, the day after tomorrow or tomorrow, depending on your schedule, that you remind me that we left off right here. And that student is going to take that job seriously and they're actually gonna be kind of proud. I kind of like to give these types of jobs also to problem students because they like the power of having a job that was given to them by the teacher. So it could be an opportunity to also lean into that and, and kind of tap into the fact that it makes them feel important. Now, the next one I mentioned in my grade homework fast video, as well as my ninja hacks for grading video, which are only going to collect homework that they did after they have practiced. So with this 
this means is that you are not going to collect every single thing that they do in your classroom. It's not going to be a worksheet that they did with their group members or a worksheet that they followed along with a video. It's going to be work that they only did after they practice. What this ends up meaning is that you are collecting far fewer assignments, which means that you have to grade far fewer assignments. And this just frees up so much time because as we said, you've got a lot on your mind and you've got a lot to take care of. And again, like I mentioned in those two videos, you're going to simplify your grading. This means that the assignments that you do grade, you're not going to grade everything. You're just going to grade one thing or maybe two things on that assignment, but you are not going to sit there and read all the essays, grade all 50 problems. You're just going to pick a few things that you're going to look at, major things that you want to assess their proficiency in, and then that's going to be their grade for the assignment because we really want to cut back on the amount of time that we're doing school stuff so that we have the mental bandwidth for our personal life. Finally, you are going to intentionally build time into your day for you to just sit at your desk and take care of stuff. Now, I have seen in the comments and other videos that not all teachers are allowed to sit at their desks, but let me tell you, when you're going through something major that's negative, you are going to need to sit down. You're gonna to need to sit down in front of your computer and clear your mind. You might have to sit down in front of your computer and answer an email from someone that needs information. It might be someone who's a lawyer or someone who's a a doctor, something like that. But you need to build in time where you can sit at your desk. So what this means that you're going to give self-directed activities. You're going to make sure there's a lot of time spent on students doing either group work or individual work and a lot less time of you standing in front of the class. You do still have to monitor them, of course, to make sure they get the work done and that they're behaving, but you want to build in time for you to sit and clear your mind because you're going to need it. You are going to need that. And that's just the reality of it. And that's why we're trying to cut back on the amount of things that you're doing so that you can free up time to take care of this and get past it so that you can move on. Now, aside from these, it's definitely important to communicate to your colleagues and your admin what's going on in your life. Now, I know that maybe not all admin are supportive. I've heard of some of them just telling you to suck it up and just deal with it. But regardless of that, still communicate with them that we're having a hard time, death in the family, something major happening in your life so that they can support you because they don't know that you're struggling. And if they don't know that you're struggling, they can't help you. If all of a sudden you're absent a lot because you're dealing with this thing in your personal life and you didn't tell them, then there's the perception that you're slacking off at your job, that you're phoning it in when really you're just trying to deal with your personal life. So make sure that you communicate to them. Don't be afraid of their response. It's important that you put it out there and let them know. And if they're going to be a jerk, well, then that's on them because you told them what happened. If they're going to tell you to suck it up when a parent dies, that's on them. And also what this could mean is that if you're on some kind of a committee or after school program, you're going to need to give those up. I know you don't want to, but you're going to need to give them up if you can. I know sometimes you don't have a choice, but if you tell your admin ahead of time and say, look, I'm going to be dealing with this and there are going to be times when I can't make it here. I think it's better if you find someone who can be consistent and I will take it next year after I've solved this problem. Then it's a lot better than you just being absent a lot from that. Or even worse, you still do these committees and these programs and you're not putting your heart into it you don't have time to deal with what's going on in your personal life you don't want to torture yourself here it's going to make you end up wanting to quit teaching so it's important that when you're doing all of this that you also not be hard on yourself it's really easy to see yourselves as a failure and to get overwhelmed by it but you are human we all go through these seasons in our life at some point in time, and you're just gonna have to prioritize yourself over teaching, and it's okay to do that. And if you implement some of these 10 tips that I just gave you, then you're gonna see that it's a lot easier to still feel like you're being the good teacher that you are while also taking care of your personal life. Now, if you're at the point where you've done all of these things, it's too overwhelming, and you're considering quitting teaching, be sure to check out this video where I go over 10 uncomfortable comfortable truths about quitting teaching.